Welcome to Third Academy's Web3 Marketing 101. So you want to be a Web3 marketer, or you're curious to know if there's a difference between Web2 and Web3 marketing. Spoiler alert, there is. And this is a six-part video series which is going to share with you all the ins and outs of Web3 marketing. Today, I'll give you a quick overview of what Web3 marketing is and the fundamental elements that set it apart from Web2 and what you need to succeed as a Web3 marketer. I'm Carly. I'm the social media and community manager of 3rd Academy, and I'll be taking you through this course. Today, we're going to cover what is Web3 marketing, what are the main differences between Web2 and Web3 marketing, and of course, we'll dive into goals and marketing structures and different types of blockchain organizations and how they operate. Marketing is a huge field. You have search engine optimization or SEO, e-commerce, paid, organic. The types are seemingly endless. Both Web2 and Web3 have all of these fields of marketing. But what changes is how companies or projects and their user base interacts. Web3 is based on the fundamentals of transparency and decentralization brought to us by blockchain. This means businesses need to be more user-centric. Oftentimes, those same users have a financial stake in the company, so they want clear reports. And that starts with marketing as the first layer of contact many users have with a company. Web3 also promises users greater ownership over their data and content. Now, this goes back to transparency, but it also throws a serious wrench in any Web2 marketer's bread and butter, analytics. If you work for a Web3 business that interacts directly with the blockchain, the type of data that you have access to will likely change. If you want to get into the weeds of this, we have an article series about Web2 versus Web3 analytics in our website library. But before you panic too much, there are still some traditional user analytics. This is because user interfaces in Web3 are still commonly built on Web2 infrastructure. But more on this later. Going back to how the user base is now essentially a decentralized board, marketers now have to engage with their audience differently. Web3 marketing is not a one-way street. It becomes a conversation between the marketer and the potential users, the community of existing users, and at the core of Web3, developers. It's no longer about talking to an audience, but cultivating a meaningful conversation in a community. So to break it down, what changes in Web3? Well, a number of things, but these three are really important. Number one. How decisions are made is often decentralized to token holders. This means company hierarchies hold a lot less value. Number two, how value is transferred is all on chain. First, there's room for more automation and less intermediaries. And second, Web3 businesses work to make this a more equal transfer of value where users see as much, if not more, value than the company itself. And finally, You'll need to focus on value. Whether you're starting with a token launch or launching a newsletter, value to your user base will make or break the length of your product lifecycle. Web3 is new and is constantly iterating, but there are several notably new types of organizations that blockchain gave rise to, and they're not all businesses in the strict sense of the word. These include blockchains themselves, decentralized apps, DAOs, DeFi, and NFT projects. And of course, exchanges that facilitate the movement of all of this, both centralized and decentralized. Don't worry if that seems like a lot to take in. We'll dive into each of these with examples so you can see what they actually do. Blockchains are the underlying infrastructure. They use distributed ledger technology to create decentralized immutable records. This makes everything trustless. Many of the third-party intermediaries we currently rely on to authenticate transactions aren't really needed. Bitcoin and Ethereum are the two most famous blockchains, but 
There are more third-generation blockchains now as well, like Solana and Cardano. Even Layer 2 solutions that operate on top of a Layer 1 to fix some of its issues, like Polygon. Because these are literally networks that seek to decentralize power, they have very strange company structures. The actual blockchain is governed by token holders, and they're able to make key decisions. However, due to the complex and very technical nature, they often have core devs. These developers help with operations and maintenance. On top of that, it's common for a blockchain to have a foundation that holds a large portion of funds for development of the ecosystem. Their goals are to get more developers to build more decentralized apps in their ecosystem and more token holders for liquidity, essentially making trading tokens hosted on blockchain fast and seamless. Then, to facilitate the trading of assets stored on the blockchain, you have exchanges. These come as both centralized, basically the same company structure we're all used to from Web2, and decentralized, user-owned and controlled. Centralized exchanges are governed by stakeholders, whereas decentralized exchanges are governed by token holders. But both have the goals of attracting more traders and having high trading volume. There is a slight difference that decentralized exchanges also need to attract liquidity providers and to facilitate smooth transactions. Centralized exchanges have more control over this internally. Coinbase and Binance are probably the best known centralized exchanges, and Uniswap and SushiSwap are well known decentralized exchanges. Now, distinctions start to blur a bit. You can think of these categories as a Venn diagram. Some projects will fall into just one category, whereas others might be in two or three. Decentralized finance, or DeFi, is an umbrella term for projects that use on-chain protocols or code to execute the same sort of financial service, and some new ones, that were used to form banks and investment platforms. So this can range from projects like MetaMask, which is a wallet, think bank account to store your on-chain assets, to Curve, which is also a decentralized exchange. There's a great degree of crossover between DeFi and other blockchain organizations, but the key is that DeFi projects are all offering financial services. This means that DeFi projects can take different forms, so you'll have to investigate on an individual basis to see whether they're governed by token holders or a centralized company. But in general, their goals are to get more users, which is common for marketers to focus on, and more volume. DAOs, or Decentralized Autonomous Organizations, simply refers to an organizational structure. You can think of a normal company structure, kind of like a pyramid, where the person in charge is at the top, and everyone else kind of filters out along the bottom. Whereas in a DAO, it's more like a horizontal structure of power where it's distributed evenly. Many Web3 organizations have already, or will, have the goal to become DAOs to better align with the goals of decentralized ownership. For instance, Uniswap, a decentralized exchange, is also a DAO. This simply means it's governed by its token holders. But you also have many other examples, like Friends with Benefits, which is a social DAO, where each member gets a say in the direction of the organization. Or there's also Meta Cartel which is a decentralized VC. Token holders determine who they invest in. Because a DAO is just a manner of organizing, they can have a huge variety of goals. But in general, all DAOs are looking to manage systems and get more contributors. DApps, or decentralized apps, are applications built on the blockchain for a decentralized structure. While this might sound a lot like DeFi, it demands a category of its own because the types of applications can go well beyond finance. For instance, you have OpenSea, which is an NFT marketplace, and Axie Infinity, which is a decentralized game. But you also have financial applications like Aave and Compound. While you might assume that because they're decentralized, this means that they're all governed by token holders, this isn't necessarily true. Many are. 
but a few use the decentralized structure to provide greater ownership and transparency to users, but the project itself is still run by a centralized company. So, once again, you have to assess project by project, and because of the great variety of decentralized apps out there, it's also good to look individually at the goals of the project themselves. But in general, most again are looking for more users and more volume. NFTs, or non-fungible tokens, are a unique kind of token. These tokens can be replicated. They are most famous for authenticating digital art, but they can also act as tickets, passes, or even memberships to DAOs like Friends with Benefits. For instance, Board Ape Yacht Club or CryptoPunks are two extremely famous generative art projects. But you'll also have the platforms that facilitate trading of such visual assets like OpenSea, Super Rare, or Rarible. Because of the broad use cases for this type of token project, they can have radically different structures. Take an individual look to see if they're governed by a centralized company or the token holders. Most NFT projects are looking to build a big and active community, sell out quickly, see wide distribution, and see continued trading volume for long-term value and royalties. Although, more recently, there have been some shifts towards a more sustainable and long-term NFT project structure. Alright, that was a lot, but it gives you a good overview of this market and a place to start. There are three main takeaways that I want to leave you with today. Number one, the target market looks different. How you talk to your audience or talk with them does need to change. Think community rather than audience. Number two, the split between decentralized and centralized can really change how you work and even who you work with. If you're just getting into this space professionally, remember that you might have to adjust how you work. And number three, finally, this is just the beginning. We touched on some of the new types of blockchain organizations and their goals because that's important as a Web3 marketer. But this is not an exhaustive list. You can also find VCs, custodial services, agencies, and more. And just about all of them need marketing. Thank you so much for joining us for this Web3 Marketing 101. This is just the first video in a series of six videos, which means we have five more to go. Don't forget to follow, like, and subscribe. Next week, we'll dive into audience and channels. And if you haven't already, join our Discord. There you'll find more resources, other marketers, events, and more. And I'll be there to answer your questions. See you next week.